Haven of memories. Every touch, every moment is like a thorn rose. Wake up! Wake up!
done here in Panacone, what will you do in your free time? I hear the Genius Society is here. How about we go stir up some excitement? Well, you know, my script isn't over yet. I didn't bring you back to hear an answer like that. Don't worry. The script says that I'll experience three deaths, but also receive an unforgettable reward on the planet of festivities. How will I know if I don't try? All possibilities exist until the outcome actually happens. Welcome, Director Topaz. The family ambassadors are still inside making preparations, but the big boss hasn't arrived yet. It'll be a while before the conference starts, I'm afraid. Huh, quite a spectacle. The family really knows how to make things look impressive. I thought they would choose a more formal and low-key location for the conference. I didn't expect them to go with a luxury airship. About this, Director. I've asked around. This airship, named uh, the Radiant Feldspar, belongs to the Alfalfa family. This conference between the IPC and the family will have a direct impact on Penacone's future. Such an important event should have been held at... <sighs> well, somewhere secretive in the moment of morning dew. The atmosphere here... Uh, it doesn't feel serious enough. Hmm. If I'm right... This conference is probably just a prelude. Whoever organized it wants to assess the IPC stance beforehand. This influential figure either has their own ambitions and wants to reach a preliminary agreement, or they plan to put pressure on us to make us back off. Oh, your mind is always so sharp, Director Topaz. And when the big boss arrives, please remind her to be cautious and watch out for any traps. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, but I don't think that will be necessary. When she's at the table, it's the others who need to be cautious. Just tell everyone on our team to stay focused on their tasks and not worry about the negotiations. Oh, got it. I'll do it right away. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Don't call Miss Jade Big Boss in front of her, or there will be serious consequences. I mean, really serious. Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Director.
figures have arrived yet. Huh. Looks like the conference won't be starting for a while. Oh, are you hungry, Numby? Hmm, food in the dream. Uh, shouldn't taste bad, right? in the sweet dream who's been handing out strange button devices to anyone he meets. According to those involved, he said something like, just press this button and all of Pentaconi will explode. Luckily, no one believed him. Still, the Bloodhound family collected these buttons just to be on the safe side. Where's that prankster? Haven't the hounds caught him yet? That guy has some skills, I'll have to admit that. However, you know, the Bloodhound family won't give up. Whoever disrupts order in the dreamscape will face severe consequences. Anyway, the family will deal with these things. Please, kindly keep your distance. Greetings, madame. What can I do for you? Hello. Could you tell me more about the Radiant Feldspar? I assume you are the ambassador of the IPC Strategic Investment Department. It's my honor to assist you. The Radiant Feldspar is owned by Mr. Odie Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family. Mr. Alfalfa invested a significant amount in building this luxurious airship and- Oh, so it's owned by old Odie himself. No wonder the ship is so lavishly decorated. Indeed, Mr. Alfalfa has impeccable taste. Only the most prestigious guests are invited by the Alfalfa family to board this airship. Please allow me to continue my introduction. The Radiant Felspar had been cruising over the Sea of Dreams in Penacony 
for an entire Ember era. But its voyage was temporarily halted due to the recent reverberation. Reverberation? <laughs> Such a formal way of putting it. You're really downplaying the whole thing. I, <laughs> I apologize. Please continue. <laughs> Following the previous reverberation in the sweet dream, the Radiant Felspar had to suspend its voyage temporarily. Thankfully, the factors that disrupted the dreamscape have been resolved. However, due to, well, certain special reasons, the Charmony Festival originally scheduled at the Panacone Grand Theater had to be tempted. So, Mr. Alfalfa suggested relocating the Charmony Festival to the Radiant Felspar, taking this opportunity to announce the resumption of the airship's voyage. Ah, well, that would meet the family's needs and also create momentum for Mr. Alfalfa himself. Quite fitting for a legendary tycoon like him. Thank you for explaining matters to me. Goodbye. Hello? The talent motivation department? Again? Internal review? Will it ever end? on a major project. I don't have time to squabble with you guys. I, the way I handled the Urillo case was approved by senior management, and all of the project logs and calls are complete. Can't you check on them yourselves? I just don't understand. Why are you so fixated on this minor case and constantly escalating it? I, seriously, what's your purpose? Sounds exhausting. Why not just hang up? In my opinion, you handled that project quite well. A little ball of ice in exchange for the actual expenses of a favor. That's not a bad deal for the department. <laughs> it's been a while, little Yelena. I've been looking forward to working with you. Never imagined this day would come so soon. Is there trouble? You can tell me anything. Just like old times. Ah, it's been a while, Madam Jade. I'm honored to have the opportunity to work with you. You're still so formal, aren't you? Forget about the hierarchy and treat me as your equal. No need for unnecessary titles like Madam. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it might take some time to get used to that. After all, you are a senior. Well... Now that we're both members of the Ten Stone Hearts, I need you to be at your best. Especially since the upcoming negotiations leave no room for error. As sharp as you are, I'm sure you've figured out the true purpose of this conference, right? I believe old Oti has taken it upon himself to test our limits before the official negotiations between the IPC and Panacone. That's true works in our favor. Do you know why? If we can reach some sort of agreement with old Oti beforehand, and gauge our opponent's boundaries, our future negotiations will go much more smoothly. That's the obvious benefit. Exactly. And the hidden benefit is that, as the head of the Alfalfa family, his actions suggest that the five lineages might not be as united as the Odes of Harmony would suggest. As long as the influence of Harmony hasn't completely permeated their core, personal desires will always have their way. Thankfully, influential figures in Panacone haven't entirely suppressed their own desires. It's similar to the power struggles within the IPC. The supposed all-for-one philosophy shared by the five lineages it's just a slogan now that the Dream Master has gone. After the downfall of the Yoke family, old Oti's faction became the dominant force in Panacone. Even if we consider only the succession order, he's the longest serving and most senior among all the family heads. Yes, that's exactly why we need to handle the conference following an agreed upon strategy. It's like playing a game of chess where every move needs to be carefully thought out. Absolutely. 
The three steps of negotiation. Listen, test, and strike. That's what you taught me. Pretty clear. Although, you seem to have changed the order in the Yarilo case. <laughs> that was based on my personal experience. I apologize for interrupting your conversation, but the family head is ready to meet the ambassadors from the Strategic Investment Department. Time to get to work. Let's prepare ourselves and meet that esteemed supporting actor. Remember, our goal is to create an opportunity for the IPC to enter Penacony. Aventurine has already made a small opening, and you and I, we're going to tear it wide open. <laughs> Welcome aboard my ship, the Radiant Feldspar, smart and charming ladies. Please, have a seat. Let's have a pleasant conversation. Welcome aboard, my dear ladies. Forgive me for any lack of attentiveness that might have led to a lengthy wait outside. No problem at all, Mr. Alfalfa. It's my honor to meet you in person. You may not be aware, but the book Odi Alfalfa, the biography, is a must-read for all Strategic Investment Department employees. After all, to many, you are the legendary figure who single-handedly built the Penacony economy. <laughs> I expected no less from the Ten Stonehearts from the Strategic Investment Department. You're definitely skilled in the art of conversation. I always enjoy talking to smart people because we don't have to beat around the bush. We can just get straight to the point instead. Since I invited you IPC ambassadors on board, I'm sure you've figured out the topic I'd like to discuss, yes? The future of Penacony, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Precisely. Those few words represent a terribly complicated situation indeed. Let's take that golden-haired guy who's not showing up, for example. He put in great effort and almost got himself killed. But what was it all for? Wasn't it eventually to create an opportunity for you IPC to regain control of the precious Astana? <laughs> the wisdom and experience you've accumulated over ten Amber Eras are truly impressive. Let's assume your assumptions are correct, Mr. Alfalfa. How would you respond to the IPC's actions? I appreciate your composure, Miss Jade. You must have witnessed much in your worldly experiences. However, perhaps you don't know much about Penacony. <laughs> Old Oti won't sit idly by when faced with a greedy wolf. Please, go ahead. I'm all ears. <laughs> then I'll be straightforward. I requested this meeting before the official conference to dissuade the Strategic Investment Department from trying to lay a finger on Penacony. If you back off now, you can make a smooth exit and prevent the IPC from losing face during more important negotiations. 
One of our P-45 executives was attacked and nearly killed in the dreamscape. VIPC can't simply ignore this incident. Moreover, considering the turbulence during the Charmony Festival, Panacone's credibility has taken a hit in the public's eyes. Despite your determined attitude, the issues plaguing Panacone are real, are they not? You use the term real, Miss Topaz, but let's not forget that this is the realm of dreams. If you want to succeed here, you need ambition and unconventional thinking. Curious about how I plan to respond to the IPC? Well, I don't mind sharing. My actions will help Panacone take a significant step forward by self-listing and going public. Going public? If I'm not mistaken, you want to bypass the IPC and go public on a universal scale. Precisely. Instead of watching the IPC gnaw away at Panacone, I'd prefer to open the doors of the sweet dream to the entire universe. Starting today, anyone in the cosmos can become a shareholder of the land of the dreams. This is the path of harmony I'll choose. <laughs> This reform should have been implemented earlier, but unfortunately, the Oak family were a bunch of blockheads blinded by order. <laughs> Their level of intellectual flexibility doesn't even come close to an old fellow like me. Thanks to the little uh, reverberation earlier, the biggest obstacle between me and my reforms has been eliminated. <laughs> The Alfalfa family will publicize the financial results of Sweet Dream Paradise, so that the entire universe can see that, despite the catastrophe, Panacone still holds immense potential and opportunities, and that the family remains confident in its future. Hmm. Crisis and opportunity are two sides of the same coin. So, you've been waiting for the right moment for Panacone to regain the spotlight. And if Panacone should seize this opportunity to overcome adversity, even if the IPC tries to intervene, every move we make will be scrutinized by trillions of people. <laughs> now I'm convinced that you've indeed familiarized yourself with my biography, Miss Jade. So... About your next move, please consider it carefully. Indeed. We need some time to digest such a wealth of information. I suggest we conclude the first half of our conference, Mr. Alfalfa. Please allow Topaz and me to confer privately for a few moments, and to respond on behalf of the IPC later. <laughs> of course! Take your time, dear ladies. The Alfalfa family had a meeting with the IPC? I got this information from a message sent by that IPC ambassador. He said it was to return the favor. It's not hard to imagine. Panacone today is pretty much like the frontier prison it once was with external forces casting greedy eyes and the undercurrent of order lurking within. Instead of falling into a situation where they are plagued by both external and internal threats, Panacone would rather take a step back and invite the IPC to negotiate at the table, ostensibly to cooperate, but in reality, to secure more opportunities for their own survival. Well, no wonder they sought the mediation from the Astral Express. In your opinion, who should we stand behind? I don't think the followers of the Harmony are completely innocent victims in all of this. 
For reasons unknown, they have a strong desire to smooth things over, which leads to speculation about their motives. If either the family or IPC were to assume full control of Penacone, it would return to its previous illusory dream of hedonism, and the efforts of those previous nameless would once again go to waste. There you are. Did you rest well? I didn't disturb you since you were in a deep sleep. Ah, she went to negotiate with the family as a representative of the crew. She'll contact us once her arrangements are ready. Hmm. After Anna's dream was shattered, the family branch from the Montour system soon arrived and swiftly took control of the situation. Most members of the Oak family fell unconscious, but fortunately, their lives were not in danger. The mastermind behind the plans was confirmed to be Gopher Wood, the previous Dream Master. But by the time we arrived, he was dead already. He'll face a trial. As for further details, the family would rather not disclose them. Ultimately, the public perceived the incident as an attack by evil forces targeting the Charmony Festival. They believe the family failed to safeguard the sweet dream, significantly eroding their credibility in the process. While quite different from the truth, this appears to be the outcome with the least impact. After all, you don't know who's awake and who's pretending to be asleep. Well, they'll open their eyes in the face of danger. Once the danger subsides, they'll embrace the sweet dream again. Here's a toast with three glasses of glory of the trailblaze to all of you. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is my lounge. It's good to see you all again. Although we might be saying goodbye again after this reunion. When will the Astral Express leave Pentagony? We'll stay a bit longer, but not too long. So, this is our final meeting then? If this is a farewell, then it seems to be missing something. Music? Atmosphere? Ah, maybe a special drink to honor those who are not here. Let's see, a mixed drink should be solemn, dignified, and unique, as we'll use it to pay respect to those fallen heroes. To the nameless resting in peace, and to Gallagher. It's rare for all passengers to leave the Express together during a trailblazing expedition. But for Penacone, it seems most appropriate. Given the conductor's presence, there's no need to worry about it. However, it's crucial that we soon return to inform Pom Pom about uh, the Nameless. In my dream, the Express stopped at many places, and passengers came and went. However, the five of us were always present, and the journey seemed never-ending. <laughs> Perhaps this could be a deep-seated desire inside me, and uh, upon realizing this, I, uh, I knew it wasn't real. <sighs> no related records exist in the databank, but I have a theory. The hidden dangers of the Order have always been within the Harmony, and this issue existed within the family from the very beginning. However, now that more powers in the universe are aware of this secret, the situation in the cosmos Like I said, we'll go and see. Once we've packed everything, we should head to our next destination.
This trailblazing expedition has been thrilling and memorable. Hopefully we've all gained insights about ideals, paranoia, clarity, and dreams from the experiences we've had. One bird longs for the earth and the other longs for the sky. Even if Robin had to stop her brother with her own hands, she won't give up on him. However, facing punishment from the Harmony is inevitable. He will face a trial. As for further details, the family would rather not disclose them. Since the family took up residence in Panacone, the Order has been hiding in plain sight under the guise of the Oak family, using the Stellaron's power to strengthen their hold on the Sweet Dream, which eventually resulted in disaster. That's the claim the family makes. Whether they were truly unaware of all this is a delicate matter. Venturine's efforts finally earned the IPC a seat at the table. As a result, a more senior representative arrived in Panacone and initiated negotiations with the family. As far as the Astral Express is concerned, the IPC will make for an invaluable ally during the negotiations to prevent Panacone returning to its former ways. Well, it was somewhat surprising. In that dream, I returned to my homeworld and reunited with my long-lost friends. And, for some reason, Acheron resurfaced in my mind. When I realized that her conclusion was not preserved in memories, I became aware of the bitter truth. The conclusion of a journey can often be sorrowful. All we can do is to try to make sure it ends on a happy note. Ready to mix your drink? I'm not sure. I haven't seen him since our last meeting at the lounge. Come to think of it, he always did come and go quietly. We used to discuss everything here. But every time he'd leave, I'd realize that I didn't know him at all. Such is the mystery that is Gallagher. I have a hunch. Perhaps he's already fulfilled his wishes and won't be coming back. Sure, we can wait. Gallagher included. Ready to mix your drink? Before we start, uh, would you like to talk to your friends? All right, as you wish. Huh. I think I have an idea about what drink to make. Would you like it bitter or sweet? It's up to you. Choose the flavor that suits you best at this moment. Drowning sweetness. One of the most challenging drinks to make. A slight imbalance in the ingredients can result in an overwhelmingly viscous sweet taste. However, with the right ratios, you get a uniquely sweet drink with a lingering aftertaste. Not a bad choice. Let's start mixing. Words always fall short. If you want to bring closure to past events at this lounge, there's no better way than mixing a drink. 
Blend all your memories and emotions together and stir them well. Through the filter of time, what remains in the glass is something to savor. Well, it's done. Here's to the nameless resting in peace. And to my friend Gallagher, the spirit of freedom will spread far and wide among the stars. And its legacy will be more timeless than a pastoral song. We're not accepted by the outside world, so we've gathered here. And one day, our souls will return to the same place. Cheers. then take this with you. I've mixed more of this last special drink for you. <sighs> the past shouldn't be forgotten. So I hope it brings back the flavors of Panacone. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure it'll leave a lasting impression. <laughs> if you happen to run into Gallagher, make sure he has a sip too. I know his tastes and he'll be thrilled. All right, enough with the heavy stuff. You guys have important things to take care of, so let's not dwell on things. Whether it's the Astral Express or Panacone, there's still a long journey ahead. So let's lift our spirits, guys, and embark towards our tomorrows. <sighs> Old Odie is a tricky opponent. I didn't expect him to take the risky step of going public at such a critical moment for Panacone. Indeed. He's definitely bold. It's that kind of boldness that made him the Odie Alfalfa he is today. Still, the outcome is uncertain. Shouting loud doesn't necessarily carry any weight. What about the phone call I asked you to make, Topaz? Ah, they agreed. But it'll take some time before they arrive. Just as it should be. The sweet dew should be served after the bitter poison. <laughs> Looks like we'll be skipping the exchanging apples step this time around. <laughs> now that we're dealing with a greedy merchant, a simple apple wouldn't make a difference. Well, I guess I included myself in that remark too. Now I'm a bit curious, Topaz. Do you think Panacone is a quality asset? Hmm. Yes. Despite its recent calamity, Panacone remains a top quality asset within the cosmos. With, uh, good credit, lucrative potential, and, uh, promising prospects. Well, that's obvious. But what I truly wanted to know is... This project is obviously too bland for your taste. Isn't it? <laughs> That's true. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Aventurine. But despite that, you trust him. You even entrusted him with a cornerstone. Something as precious as life itself to finish this gamble. Uh, are you not in the same boat, Miss Jade? Without us playing along, your Jade Stone wouldn't have made it across the border so easily, allowing you to see all desires that flow through dreams to gain a bargaining chip in negotiations. <laughs> That's why I'm willing to stake my Topaz Stone to cover for you. <laughs> it's like one big elaborate game of chess. Once that kid sets his mind to something, nothing can stop him. Not even fate. Well, at least he's still alive, and that's the best outcome. <laughs> Looks like uh, we've strayed off topic, Miss Jade. Should we discuss our next steps? No need. I'll go it alone. Meanwhile, 
You can go greet our honored guest and wait for my message. Okay. Is that Robin? Huh. She's also here on the Radiant Felt's bar. There's a good show. Do as you're told. Miss Robin. I didn't expect to meet you here. Miss Jade? Greetings. The opening ceremony for the Charmony Festival has been moved to the Radiant Feldspar, so I'm here making some preparations. How about you? Have you spoken with Mr. Alfalfa? I'm actually on my way to meet him right now. Do you know him well, Miss Robin? Unfortunately, I've never met him. I've only heard a few comments from the former head of the Oak family. Mr. Alfalfa is respectable when it comes to business. But in other respects, I can't say the same. Hmm. Where do you think the future of the planet of festivities is headed? I believe the sweet dream will see its rebirth. Just like the Radiant Feldspar resumed its voyage. The Harmony needs a new direction. Only by bidding farewell to the past, can we actually sail into the future. There are no permanent allies or everlasting enemies. So let's both take what we need from this deal. Naturally. I'm looking forward to your performance. See you at the festival. See you later, Miss Jade. There's a good shot. Do as you're told. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Alfalfa. Let's continue our discussion. <laughs> Figured out something already, Miss Jade? Hmm. But where is Miss Topaz? Topaz has something else to take care of. You'll be seeing her later. Talks can still continue between the two of us. Is it just me, miss? Your tone sounds very different now. I need to set a good example for my junior. It's not a good habit to be too loose-lipped during negotiations, right? Now we can speak frankly and openly. Do you believe what I said, Odie? You're not the only merchant who has seen the changes in the cosmic market over the past ten Amber Eras. Interesting. <laughs> now that's interesting. Good. It's good to be straightforward. Openness and transparency are my things. So, tell me, what's your next move? Unfortunately, I'd like to speak the harsh truth before laying out my plan. <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. First, your plan won't work. Penacony has no way of sidestepping the IPC and going public. Second, you can't stop the IPC from entering Penacony. We've got all the time and connections in the world to find a way in. We'll keep tearing down and rebuilding this place until the Asdana system gets used to the IPC's ways again. Now, I'm repeating your words exactly. If you don't want to be a laughingstock and have everyone gunning for you at the official conference, you'd better drop your little pie-in-the-sky plan. Oh, interesting. Indeed. You surely have a way with words. Now, I'm curious to know what you have up your sleeve. Mr. Alfalfa, let's not forget that the IPC controls the biggest interstellar publicity platform. More than half the news networks in the universe take their orders from us. The moment news spreads about Penacony going public, trillions of customers will immediately receive a message like this. The family's protection for Penacony has expired. 
any mishaps in the dreamscape could result in permanent brain death. Care to guess how many ways we have to turn alfalfa credits into worthless junk within a measly 24 system hours? With the entire cosmos keeping a close eye on Peniconi, I assure you, it won't be too hard. You really think you can pull that off? Even from Pier Point, as distant as it may be, I'm more than capable of keeping you on a tight leash. However, if you agree to give up that half-baked plan to go public, the IPC will assure you that will never jeopardize the interests of the family heads under your leadership. After all, we also need allies here in Asdana. The IPC can assist Penacony with financing, starting by acquiring 30% equity shares. With our financial support, stabilizing and rebuilding Penacony will be a piece of cake. 30% equity, you say? Who can guarantee you won't want more in the future? <laughs> That's the brilliant part of it all. The answer is simple. No one. There are no guarantees. It all hinges on self-awareness and mutual respect. However, the board of directors will consider the interests of the family heads to some extent. You're a smart merchant, old Odie. Isn't the whole purpose of this elaborate game to showcase your business acumen and seek more benefits for the family? It benefits us if we both take a step back. And if that's not enough for you, I'm pretty sure that another goal of making Penacony go public is to expand the influence of the Planet of Festivities and attract more customers. I understand your concern, and I have a solution for that, too. Fine. Now I see your sincerity. As the head of the Alfalfa family, I don't think I have any reason to refuse your offer. However, as their chosen one, I still need one final answer. Go ahead. I'm listening. When I was a child, I heard the adults recite the tale of the ancient Amberera, about the ascension of Shipe, the Harmony, and the downfall of Enna, the Order. The Order and the Preservation used to be close in ancient times. So, why does the IPC, as a follower of the Amber Lord, seek collaboration with the family instead of aligning with the Order? The answer is simpler than you think. It's all about credits. Everyone's favorite thing and the universally recognized currency among the stars. The IPC has the power to perpetually ensure their value. With each new world integrated into the credit system, the IPC adds another building block to its cause. Eventually, all exchanges, capital, and businesses will operate within a unified monetary system. By then, all planetary developments will be recorded in accounts with well-defined values and the ability for exchange and circulation. And the heart of everything will be Klepoth's credit. Ah, and then the IPC will be able to exert influence over everything. Our intention is to establish enduring preservation. So I'm sure you can understand. This universe doesn't need two types of order. Hmm. <laughs> well said. Now you've convinced me. All right. Tell me your solution. Let's see if we're thinking the same thing. Then let's continue our conversation. Please, Topaz. Invite Sweet Dew to join us at the table. Thank you for your presence, Miss Himeko.
please allow me to introduce her to you, Mr. Alfalfa. This is Miss Himeko from the Astral Express, one of the future shareholders of Penacony. I've heard so much about you, Mr. Alfalfa. It's an honor to meet you as representative of the Astral Express. <laughs> this stunning lady is the navigator of the Astral Express? It's a pleasure to meet you. I believe everyone here is familiar with the general contents of the proposal. After this round of financing, the IPC is expected to hold 30% of Penacony's shares. Then, the IPC will transfer 5% of that stake to the Astral Express and recommend Miss Himeko as an independent director to honor the sacrifices and contributions made by the former Nameless to the Land of the Dreams. While this decision isn't finalized yet, we are honored that everyone here recognizes the way of the Trailblaze. While the Nameless didn't embark on their journeys for fame or fortune, if this is the wish of both the family and the IPC, I will represent the Astral Express and fulfill my duty as a member of the Board of Directors. The entire crew has agreed to assist in the reconstruction of Penacony. Beyond that, in our future travels, we are committed to bringing the beautiful dreams of the Planet of Festivities to more worlds. Of course, all cooperation is based on one premise. The path of harmony in Penacony must not be distorted again, and such a tragedy must never recur. an agreement. So the issue is settled, I presume. What about the remaining family heads? They will soon realize the situation. When old Odie answered the last question, he represented more than just the Alfalfa family. When should we schedule the formal negotiations? I'll handle the arrangements. It's all up to you. I'll step back and let you handle the negotiations and take over. I won't be involved. Uh, but Miss Jade, this is... Aventurine initiated this case, and you were his project partner. If that kid hadn't overplayed his hand, I wouldn't have been pushed to the forefront. I came here today to help you sort out the toughest issue. I trust you'll be able to wrap things up quite nicely, little Yelena. Of course, there won't be any problems. And please, give Diamond my assurance. Don't worry. Diamond has always trusted us. I'll put in a good word for you, and you'll have your P-45 position back in no time. Radiant Feldspar. What a fantastic ship. Well, now that my business is done, it's time for me to indulge in my own little hobby. Ah, you want to open a Bon and Jade Exchange branch on this ship too? Opportunities like this don't come around often. Just look at the guests on this ship. They're surely holding a wealth of valuable treasures. Well, <laughs> I'll take my leave. A pawn shop can't run without a boss. See you around, Topaz. I have one more question for you, Miss Jade. Hmm? Go ahead. That dose of bitter poison. I'm curious as to how you found this information. I didn't find the information. It came to me. It was from... a lady concerned with the future of the Harmony. In return, I've agreed to help her with something, but that's for later. We can deal with it after we leave Penacony. You see, that's what investment is all about. The seeds of opportunity are already sown. 
They only need a little bit of nourishment to take root. And then after, all we need to do is wait patiently. Like right now, for example. It's just about time my final guest boarded the ship. Sneaking in was way easier than I thought. The family's security is as lax as ever. So, this is the Radiant Feldspar. <laughs> so luxurious. A pawn shop that grants wishes. Is there really a place like that on the ship? I'll find out for myself if the rumors are true or not. Is that... her? Huh. Vanished in the blink of an eye. So the Astral Express is here too. The charming festival has really been postponed. <laughs> One more thing. Mr. Alfalfa and I discussed it. I'll present a gift to the Astral Express on behalf of the family as a token of gratitude for the nameless contributions to Penacony. Please help me with the necessary arrangements. Right away, Miss Robin. Can I ask you something? Oh, greetings, Miss. Is there anything I can help you with? Do you know how to get to the pawn shop? Pawn shop? Ah, you must be talking about Lady Bonajade's place, right? I heard she offers uh, special services there. I've marked the pawn shop's location on your device. Please feel free to check it out. Lady Bonajade. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Was it from Silverwolf? Think of it. She disappeared after mentioning that she was going to meet with the Genius Society. Hmm. I wonder how things turned out for her. to Bonna Jade Exchange, Radiant Feldspar Branch. How should I address you, dear lady? Just call me Samuel. Samuel, nice name. So what do you need, Miss Samuel? And what are you willing to give up in return? I want to keep on living. And for that, I'm willing to give up everything I have. Everything you have. That's right. Everything. Miss Samuel, I think you'd best turn around. It seems you're not quite familiar with the term pawn. What do you mean? I mean it literally. I sense your burning desire to live, but unfortunately, you don't have anything of equal value to offer. <laughs> Okay, a pawn shop that grants wishes. <laughs> I see, it's just a marketing gimmick. Well, that's quite a harsh accusation. I understand you may not fully comprehend what I mean, but don't worry, I'll help you understand. 
Go and talk to these people. They're all customers of my pawn shop. See for yourself if their wishes have come true. Once you've done that, come back to me. I'll help you understand the true meaning of pawn and make you realize what you're missing. That Lady Bonajade feels more like a money lender rather than the owner of a pawn shop. Well, I've got nothing better to do anyway. I'll do as she says and see what happens. Stupid little girl. Coming back to lose more money, huh? Ugh, enough talk. Let's get started. This will be our final game. I'm betting my entire fortune. Oh, a big talker, huh? <laughs> All right. Let's see what you've got. in a row. How could I possibly lose to you at such a crucial moment? It's true. Lady Bonna Jade has truly blessed me. <laughs> Finally, my luck has turned for the better. Great new era for Stacy, the master gambler has arrived. <laughs> Dorothy, check this out. Whoa, what a beautiful necklace. Is it made of cymophane? It's stunning. How did you know I love jewelry made of cymophane? It has the same purple hue as the necklace my dad gave my mom. I've never told anyone about it. How did you find out, Del? So... So... You go out with me? <laughs> I... I will. R really? I mean, really? I never said yes before because I thought you had no idea what I liked. But this gift made me realize you were actually paying attention all along, trying to learn everything about me. So yes, I will. has actually come true. So, shall we go, Dorothy? Let's go outside and enjoy the stunning views of the 12 hours. Yeah, let's go. Hey, did 
Did you see that? The gray-haired one outside. <laughs> Don't look around. Just focus on your drink. Seriously, they look like a total lunatic. Is that... her? Yeah, you heard right. We've got him. He's been hiding at the moment of soul in Pentacone, using a fake identity. And he even poses as a professor at Paperfold Academy. I've made a deal with the family. I'll leave the extradition-related paperwork to you. How'd I find him? Well, let's just say I had some help from an influential figure. Don't ask for the details. 22 years. Yeah. 22 years of chasing this guy all over the cosmos. You know? Never thought it'd end up like this. Right here. I'm gonna hang up for now, partner. I need to raise a glass to myself. All of their wishes actually did come true. <laughs> but... I just don't understand. How did she do it? And what does Pawn really mean? I should go back and ask. <sighs> chirp, chirp! Origami bird! Hey, little birdie! Come on! Oh, calm down already! Everyone's staring at you! No, it's not the best time to do that. Sorry. I'll catch up with you later. visiting the Bonajade Exchange. But I'm not sure what you want me to see. They all seem to be living... fulfilled lives. Not so fast. This step was just to show you that the Bonajade Exchange is genuine. That I had the power to grant their wishes. And now, I'll tell you the price they paid. Del was from a wealthy family. He was head over heels for Dorothy, and wanted to win her heart. So he made a deal with me. He put up his entire fortune in exchange for a gift that would impress Dorothy. It was a piece of cake for me, thanks to my IPC connections. However, Dell will soon find himself evicted from the dreamscape, because he can't afford his room. Whether he can bounce back from poverty, well... That depends on him. Let's just hope that necklace will keep the relationship from crumbling. Then there's Stacy, a lady with a gambling addiction. She wanted some serious luck, but she had nothing to offer. So I took something else instead. I took away all her close relationships. From the moment she stepped out of the Bonajade Exchange, Every casino in the cosmos would remember her name. But her parents and siblings would sever ties with her. And it would be impossible for Stacy to make any real friends again. She will accrue a vast wealth due to her good luck. But she'll never be able to use it for the people who truly matter to her. As for Detective Walker, he spent two decades chasing down a wanted criminal 
was some heinous crime. But he never caught the guy. In his desperation, he came to me. He offered his own memory system as collateral. In due time, his memories as a detective will be erased, and he will completely forget his own identity and all the sacrifices he has made. Interesting, don't you think? I fulfill people's desires and grant them favors, and soon they come back to me with even greater desires. When people see others' desires get fulfilled, they develop their own desires. It seems like an endless cycle, but it does have a goal. In the end, I will get what I desire from this whirlpool. And patience happens to be one of my greatest strengths. So now, do you understand what you must give up, Miss Samuel? Or should I address you as... AR-26710, a remnant of Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Hm. I'm not surprised. You are much calmer than I expected. Entropy Loss Syndrome. Truly an unjust misfortune, isn't it? The higher-ups in Glamoth implemented such a failsafe within the genes of their warriors, just to make sure the Republic's most powerful weapons wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. As for the price, those Iron Cavalries weren't exactly seen as regular, independent humans, so there wasn't really a price to be paid. However, you are different. You're now a Stellaron Hunter, a living being named Firefly. Naturally, you want to continue your existence, but with the Firmament Front gone, the people who know the secret and can cure the disease are nowhere to be found. Are you suggesting that the IPC has a remedy? Well, there might be a silver lining. That's all I can say for now. I see. It's no wonder you said I can't provide anything of equal value. Because nothing I own holds any meaning. So, you're going to ask me to personally restrain my partners to ensure my own survival? Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. Partners? A nice way to put it. Now I'm even more curious about the Stellaron Hunters. Each of you has your own identity and a special bond with each other. It's strong and intimate, and yet it allows for independence. Just as the Ten Stonehearts follow Diamond, you follow your own leader. I wonder what they are like, and if all Stellaron Hunters are like you. Traveling on the path of finality, but struggling against your destiny. Attempting to move in the opposite direction. I really hope that one day, all of you will come and visit my pawn shop. I'll be waiting patiently for that day. Can I see this as an invitation? From Diamond to the Stellaron Hunters while keeping the IPC in the dark? Consider it more of a personal offer from myself. It doesn't represent the IPC or the Strategic Investment Department. The Stellaron Hunters have interacted with the IPC, but not the Ten Stonehearts. Our paths have never crossed. As for your offer, I can pass it along to my partners. But I have a question. You know who I am. And you must know that my partner is keeping an eye on this room. If she wanted to... She could let the entirety of Pierpoint know about it within a few mere seconds. What drives you to take such a risk and extend this invitation on behalf of Diamond, even if it could lead to your downfall? Simply put, you and I are the same. However, unlike you Stellaron Hunters or the Astral Express, we band together 
merely to obtain what we want. Each of us has our own past and destined ends, and on this journey, we have been invited by Diamond to join him. This journey could be either brief or long, as each of us carries a void in our hearts that can only be filled from the outside. So, Diamond made us a promise to divide the power of the Emanator of Preservation into ten pieces and give each of us a cornerstone to fill that void. Mortal flesh is fragile, yet my heart is unyielding like the monolith. For without this resolve, the way of preservation would fade into oblivion. So, you understand? This pledge goes beyond a mere oath. It's our collateral in exchange for opportunities, wealth, survival, and a future. And whatever we gain from it will fortify the stone hearts in return, allowing us to achieve the great cause of the preservation when the war among the eons eventually comes. <laughs> I understand. Take your time, child. You don't need to give me an immediate answer. Like I said, Patience is one of my greatest strengths. If fate turns that page, our paths will cross again. It's a shame, though, that this pawn shop can't give me what I desire. My last attempt in Penacony. <laughs> well, it ends with hope. Lady Bonajade, I've come to deliver the collaterals promised. Turns out, the meeting to decide the future of Penacony went much smoother than expected. With little debate. The Charmony Festival's opening ceremony is starting soon. I should head down and take a look. This airship has quite a few treasures. A bountiful harvest. Take you out with just one shot whenever I choose. <laughs> oh, that'd be my honor. Now, don't worry, I hate cheating the <laughs> name. You better. Ah, look who's here. The great hero of the Astral Express. The most dazzling trailblazer in all of Penacony. Oh, you're here too. <laughs> Long time no see, friend. Let's set aside those under the table dealings for now, partner. Don't want to spoil the festive mood of the Charmony Festival. Oh, I agree. Now let's congratulate Miss Trailblazer. I hear the family intends to thank the crew at the Charmony Festival. Punishing the wicked and eradicating evil is a top priority. 
Would have been strange if we sat it out. Making an entrance like that, us Galaxy Rangers are making a comeback. Reckon you'll meet quite a few followers of the hunt on your journey. Do me a favor, pass on my regards, will ya? Forget it. I'm not one to beat around the bush. I've got a score to settle with a high-ranking executive fella named Oswaldo Schneider. This flamboyant fella here can help me find him. Now the feud between the marketing development department and the strategic investment department is well known across the cosmos. But what I didn't expect was the involvement of the Galaxy Rangers in this feud. Looks like things are about to get spicy. Thank you. I also hope you enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. I'll pass. But I do hope you guys have fun. If you don't mind, let's play a few rounds next time. Ah, yes. I remember you. Your performance at Herta's space station was... Adequate, I suppose. Mm. No wonder that gambler likes you so much. The Intelligentsia Guild assigned me to be an invigilator for the IPC's ambassadors. Nothing more than an errand from the Office of Academic Affairs. Very well. The Charmony Festival is about to commence soon. Take advantage of this unique opportunity. A blend of work and play is essential for superior knowledge absorption. The executives of the IPC and the Guild say that we are strategic partners. Yet, from my perspective, I am invariably the teacher, and he, along with you and every other individual, is the student. From this perspective, Venturine isn't what you call an ideal student. Yet, he's also not utterly obtuse. Alas, the void within him can never be filled by talent and knowledge. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't turn into a philosophical zombie. Ah, saying such a thing merely indicates that you have not truly grasped the essence of learning. The principle of balancing work and relaxation is scientifically grounded with the relevant proof process detailed on page 21 of the 31,467th issue of the academic journal Star Caesar. Acquiring knowledge aims to enhance living. Don't invert priorities like those dolts at the guild. <laughs> then you'll excuse me. Cornerstones are all different. Some can even read your thoughts, grasp your desires. So be careful. Uh, now that I think about it, 
It was good that Bronya got there when she didn't, Bellabog. <laughs> if she came any later, we probably wouldn't have ended up as friends. <laughs> Jade Exchange. What should I call you? <laughs> no problem. Let's just use this name. So, Miss, March 7th. What do you wish for? And what are you willing to sacrifice for it? the human language and can communicate. Bring its tail to me as collateral, and your dreams will come true. Festival hasn't started. Let's take a quick break. Hi, we meet again. Who's that? It's really you. I knew I didn't get the wrong person. Yes, it's just I didn't get the chance to say hello. There's still some time before the Charmony Festival starts. Do you want to chat? To murder cases, a showdown with the IPC's ambassadors, the legacy of the Nameless, 
and a remnant of the Order who wishes to replace an eon-created paradise with a dream. You guys even ended up shattering the dream. <laughs> it's truly been quite a vacation. It's a good thing that you guys managed to overcome all those difficult problems. Congratulations! After the Charmony Festival's opening, will you guys be leaving again? <laughs> there will always be somewhere. After all, you guys are on the path of the Trailblaze. Before joining the Stellaron Hunters, Elio told me that this journey will tell me how to live on. That's all he said. As for the rest, it's up to me to find out. So, I'll pay extra attention to any leads that will let me live on. <laughs> this trip to Pentagoni is no different. Yes, sadly I was looking in the wrong place. But I did reap some rewards. Do you know Miss Jade from the IPC Strategic Investment Department? Bonajate Exchange belongs to her. She told me her price, but... I know. But what she wanted wasn't my answer either. Of course, I want to live on. But... What fate owes me... I want it paid back, not passed on. No one else should be involved because this is a grudge between me and fate. Speaking of which, actually, I feel that I still owe you a formal apology for... that matter with the performer of the Iris family. Even the smallest of lies can turn into a betrayal as sharp as a blade. I'm sorry. Really? Then it seems what Kafka taught me was correct. To me, hiding is much easier than being honest. Yet, I still want to try expressing my emotions as any ordinary person would. It's that girl! Get moving! Arrest that criminal before the Charmony Festival's opening ceremony starts! I can't believe they've chased me this far. Looks like we have to say our goodbyes. Don't worry about me, just go and enjoy the ceremony. The script hasn't reached its end yet. We will meet again. I hope she's okay. But if it's only those two hounds again, she'll probably be fine. I'll send a message later to check in on her. Let's go attend the Charmony Festival first. Let's take a seat here. <sighs> Everything is settled. But there's still some time left. Maybe I should take a walk. <sighs> Forget it. I've done enough walking around already. Let's take a seat and rest for a while. like I don't have to worry about her. Let's wait for the opening ceremony to start. Gentlemen, and friends from all over the cosmos. It's a pleasure to join you all in celebrating the grandest ceremony of the Amber Era, the Charmony Festival. Firstly, on behalf of the Penacony family's five major lineages. And on behalf of myself, I'd like
like to extend a warm welcome to all our guests. As you all may have noticed, this year's Charmony Festival is far from regular. Thanks to the efforts of everyone, the celebration is unprecedented in scale, with factions from across the cosmos in attendance. Not only that, the customary opening ceremony held at the Penaconi Grand Theater has now moved to the Radiant Feldspar, the very airship you all stand upon. We invite you to express your warmest applause and deepest appreciation for O.T. Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family, for his selfless devotion to the Harmony's cause. What makes this festival so uniquely significant? As is widely known, the Radiant Feldspar had to halt its voyage due to an anomaly in the Sweet Dream, sparking widespread discussion in the Twelve Hours. Thanks to the hard work of Penacone's internal and external factions, we've finally gotten the dreamscape back on track, just in time for the Charmony Festival. And as they say, good things come in pairs. The Charmony Festival not only celebrates this achievement, but also marks the relaunch of the Radiant Belt Spar. And finally, the last reason. Does everyone remember the Watchmaker? In truth, the family has poured their efforts into this festival just to commemorate this legendary luminary. The father of Penacone, Mikhail Char Legwork, one of the legendary nameless who laid the foundations of Penacone. In the most bewildering times of the planet of festivities, it was he who descended from the sky with his companions, who taught us through trailblazing where freedom lies. It was also they who led the vanguard in the pioneering of the dreamscape, in exchange for what is now known as the Paradise of Harmony. It can be said that Penacone's splendid success today is deeply rooted in the trailblazing ethos the Watchmaker planted within us. Only by honoring this trailblazing spirit can we fulfill our mission and spread harmony to a broader audience. Trailblaze, of course. If it weren't for everyone on the Astral Express, we wouldn't be able to successfully host this Charmony Festival. Thus, with unanimous consent from the five major lineages, Penacone's family, on behalf of all family members throughout the cosmos, offer a token of appreciation to the nameless. We will transfer ownership of the Radiant Belt Spar to the Astral Express. A meager appreciation that we hope you will accept with grace. Let us gift our applause and cheers to these brave and dauntless nameless. of Penacone and the universe, and to the generous Alfalfa family head, Mr. O.T. Alfalfa. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> uh, to make a decision like that, this little bird is no less capable than her brother. <laughs> yes, well, yes, well. Right. 
but have you forgotten someone, my gray-haired friend? I put a bomb on the ship. You have ten minutes to find it. Better hurt. <laughs> when did this get shoved into my hands? There's still so many bombs. Now's not the time for plot twists. I can't handle this alone. Time to create a group and inform everyone. Start following the plan. At least I made some progress. Gotta keep working at it.
But unfortunately, I'm conducting one of my customers' unsolved cases. I need your help, miss. You've had quite a few run-ins with Dr. Boone. And with the recent bomb situation, you're bound to find evidence that proves Dr. Boone is the killer. The first case is the Soul Glad Factory Arson case. We found a hammer, a doll, and half a liter of unidentified fluid at the scene of the crime. Our forensic results. The second case is the Blue Hour Auction Robbery. Those are all the details. I trust in your deduction. Wrong and oh, But seeing as you put in so much effort, I'll throw you a bone. The bone. Okay. 
here in a gift for you. A dream that has the thrilling life and death moments I shared with a beautiful memo keeper. If you haven't seen it yet, you should hurry up and look for Dr. Edward. I received a message from an unknown sender and rushed here as soon as I could. 27 minutes, 52 seconds. 27 minutes, 51 seconds. The sweet dream has lost the protection of the order. If it were to blow up here, the consequences would be unfathomable. I've scrutinized it for a long time, but the bomb's design is incredibly unique, as if it's been locked by some mysterious path force. Apart from its creator, I fear no one knows how to deactivate it. Hmm. Actually, there might be another way. Do you still remember? The script said that I will experience death three times in the Land of Dreams. I think this moment heralds the third time. of evoking dreams. I employ a Stellaron Hunter special method in order to enter dreams instead. This allows me to perform feats that typical dream chasers can't. As long as I can bear the pain of the memoria pressure, I'll be able to dive into the primal memory zone beyond the dream and extend a lifeline to the Radiant Feldspar. I will take this bomb into the depths of the dreamscape as deep as possible, where there are no living souls around. That way, at least no one will get hurt. Don't worry. I believe that this Firefly armor will be enough to take me to where I need to go before the countdown ends. And maybe even make it back safely. At present, this is our best and most logical course of action. After all, a long story deserves a happy ending. I have some words to share with you. 
though they were spoken to me by Miss Acheron. She said that the so-called impossible is merely something that has yet to happen. At the moment, there are so many things that seem impossible. But are they really never going to happen? Maybe it's just that the moment to disprove these impossibilities hasn't arrived yet. Whether it be a literal ending, suffering akin to death, or a harrowing deathscape. Before the appointed destination arrives, they are all the same. Yet I can still make Mary had choices. I also firmly believe that... that when that moment arrives for us to make a choice, the answer to our end will already be within our hearts. It is not destiny that shapes us, but we who shape destiny. The Astral Express and the Stellaron Hunters are like light and shadow. We walk on different paths, intertwined, moving forward and growing together. Maybe the end is predestined, but it is not today. Things are going too well. Let's speed up the countdown. Human life is short, just like fireflies to a flame. So if you have an answer in your heart, always remember, don't leave with any regrets. We have this right. safety. Why don't you go take a closer look? <laughs> to see a child holding it. He said the flowers were prepared by Aunt Jessie for the watchmaker and the war comrade he'd missed his whole life. Mikhail would place two bunches of flowers here year after year. And after he left, it became three. Your wishes will always be remembered by someone. Now, Panacone, as you hoped, has welcomed the dawn after a long, dark night. The path forward may not be a bed of roses, but at least people are prepared to step forth towards freedom. Tiernan, you can go home now. While the Nameless are also preparing for the next stop of their voyage. Before leaving, we still have one last thing to do. A fitting end to the tale of the departed. One could not ask for a better farewell. Go on. They're all here. Honestly, when 
when I heard the conductor's request, I was pretty surprised. The Nameless. Those who trailblaze, doing good deeds but never seeking recognition. After all this time, how would we even find those three people in such a vast place like Penacony? But it seems, in the land of the dreams, anything is indeed possible. History may not remember the names of the dead, but the stars will attest to their journeys. The first glimmer of light in the prolonged night often illuminates little, as it is fleeting in the darkness too vast. But because of this, people will remember. As long as something shines in the night sky, then when the first star falls, countless more will follow. Streaking across the horizon. Brooklyn Tiernan, Rosalina Jane Estella, we raise a toast to you, trailblazers of the Silver Rail. A toast to history that no longer remains silent. The passionate and courageous pursuit and a voyage that traverses the stars. This is the last riddle that Mr. Gallagher left for us. In the end, we still failed to figure out his true identity, or if he was even a living person. Uh, what should I say? I mean, this guy is definitely a history fictionologist, all right. I'm suddenly reminded of the time at the theme park when he said he was only 13 years old. Could that have meant something too? Either way, he's an enigmatic character for sure. At least our journey together in Penacony was real enough. And his loyalty and love for this land must have been real too, right? Gallagher, we raise a toast to you, the slumbering hound. To the festival's invitation to all lies and the singular truth. If we ever meet again, please don't talk in riddles. the Astro Express ready to depart Penacony? Uh, apologies, Mr. Mika, that we are only now bidding you farewell. Oh, that's all right. You've all done so much for the Watchmaker, and we are forever indebted. Allow me, as the representative of Dreamflux Reef, to make another toast to all the nameless. What will the people of Dreamflux Reef do now? Many will continue to live here. Those accustomed to being awake will mostly have a hard time getting used to a life of darkness with their eyes closed. Though the order has faded, there must be someone to watch over this primal memory zone. <sighs> Penacone's nights are long, and there are many who are still far from a good night's sleep. As for the sweet dream over there, <laughs> we're still managing without it. Mika and residents of Dreamflux Reef, we raise a toast to you, watchers of the long dream. To your tenacity throughout time, to each sorrowful night, and to the dawn that is finally upon us. In the end, we 
we still came full circle. This trailblazing expedition started from the moment you and the bellboy ran into each other. After going on a journey of many twists and turns, they still ended up where they started, just like a clock's hands that turn round and round. The start and end of each day will always land on 12 o'clock, the advent of time moving forward. There shouldn't be much left to say. This entire adventure started because of you and should naturally end with you. And then, a new page will be turned. Mikhail Char Legwork, we raise a toast to you, watchmaker of the land of the dreams, nameless of the Astral Express. To Peniconi's past, present, future, and the child's unwavering dream unto death. The trailblaze can illuminate the way, but ultimately, the future of a world belongs to those who live in it. Mm. I still feel that Mr. McHale must have really wanted to witness this day himself. What's on your mind, March? Just a strange feeling. I had it a few stops ago, but it's super strong this time. Why not talk about it? Maybe everyone's thinking the same thing. I can't help but think that whether it's Mr. McHale, Mr. Tiernan, or Madame Rosalina, their lives must have been long, and they must have experienced plenty of stories. also young once, stumbling and bumbling around just like us, getting into scraps and mischief, that sort of stuff. Companions, enemies, journeys, adventures, all the sad and happy memories. The every day that we're used to, they've lived through them too. But those things are all in the past. precise thing I can't let go of. It'll be easier to understand if I use an analogy. Like, when you're reading a book, if one of its characters keeps running into obstacles and experiences an ending full of regrets, we're bound to feel a bit mixed about it, right? we've seen every nook and cranny of their lives, we see these people as special. So, even if there are parts of it that aren't really realistic, nor logical, we still hope that their story gets a good ending when it comes. But, what if they... and we... aren't really that special? When Mr. McHale sat in this chair, Waiting for the Astral Express to arrive every day. What was he thinking? And if, at the end of his life, he could still firmly say he had no regrets... Then, what is this regret we feel in our hearts right now? Hmm. I think each and every one of us is searching for the answer to this very question. The universe is vast, and our lives are but specks. The trailblaze never ends, but against the backdrop of the cosmos, the average person's lifelong journey is merely a short stretch. But it is in this minuscule distance that paths cross and countless worlds connect. The universe may not remember every person who leaves a time along the silver rail, but we will. As long as we remember, their stories will never end. And what Mr. McHale has left for us is his answer to this very question. It may not be perfect, 
but it left a smile on this storied, jaded old nameless's face at the end of his life. And its meaning will be interpreted by those who come after us. It's not the answer that's important, but what we can learn from others' answers, right? This is what trailblazing is. Sure. <laughs> I'm really sorry for bringing down the vibe. Quick, Don Hung, tell us a dad joke to lighten the mood. <laughs> it's never a bad thing to reflect. One day we'll all have to face our own farewells. <laughs> but before that, we still have a long way ahead of us together. So the most important thing right now is to tell the conductor what we saw in Penacony. Then prepare ourselves for our next trailblazing destination. <sighs> I should get back to the Express. Or maybe I could say my final goodbye to Acheron. Do you still remember when we first arrived in Penacony? Who would have thought our paths would cross in such a way? <sighs> Come to think of it, I didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself. Simply put, I'm a self-annihilator who was cursed by the Nihility. My hometown was destroyed a long time ago, and the whole world was erased beneath their shadow. In order to fight against the cruel end of self-destruction, I went on a journey in search of a way to sever the chains of the Nihility. After a long and grueling search, I am convinced that my destination lies within the depths of the Dark Web, where reality and the Nihility are separate. In there lurks a secret called Device Nine. One day, I'll reach it. The ocean of stars is vast, and given our destinations, I'm afraid our paths may not cross again. But the trailblazing expedition ahead is always full of unknowns, and my blade is sharp enough to sever fate. As long as we maintain our original resolve, I believe there will come a day where we will meet again. Ah. In that case, I must apologize for my rudeness. Do you remember when we first met? I once said you reminded me of an acquaintance. Because of the self-annihilator's curse, my memories are stripped away, blurring my past. And after our journey together, what I originally thought were familiar feelings were merely illusions. I believe this was truly our first meeting. That's right. What matters more is not who I am, but what we have done together. This story will forever be etched in my heart. We both still have our own paths to walk. So let's forge ahead. Hopefully, if we meet again, it'll be beneath clear skies.
Your method of consolation is truly unsophisticated. Still better than just standing there like a scarecrow. Oh, hey, you're finally back. We told Pom Pom all about our adventure, and they suddenly started crying. I've never seen Pom Pom so sad before. <laughs> Conductor never cries. Pop Pop is never sad. Pop Pop is just, just, just angry. Yeah, angry. No matter where the express stops, you lot always manage to cause chaos. My well thought out timetable completely ignored. If you carry on like this, the express is gonna run out of fuel. Okay. Oh, Pom Pom, just let it all out. Everyone, could you all take a break in the next car? Don't worry. I'll stay here with Pom Pom. But... Let's go, March. Those three nameless must have meant a lot to Pom Pom. No one knows exactly when Pom Pom boarded the express, but one can surmise that their journey has been filled with many hellos and goodbyes. Probably more than we can imagine. The fact that they're crying so hard is probably a good sign. It proves that Pom Pom's emotions haven't become dulled by the grind of time. They still deeply cherish every nameless who was boarded the Express, and value every journey shared with them. Leave it to Himako. When it comes to comforting, there's no one better on the Express. <laughs> well, they were a little emotional at the time, but I'm afraid that's not out of the question. Since you joined us, the Express has stayed longer than anticipated at every stop along the way. And to ensure that everyone always makes it back on board, Pom Pom has had no choice but to delay the warp jump schedule. I see. <laughs> no wonder I can regularly hear Pom Pom pacing anxiously up and down the corridor. Turns out Pom Pom's been silently putting in a lot of work for us. Wow. Different from typical vehicles, the Astral Express converts every trailblaze into the energy it needs to run. Ideally, as long as trailblazing expeditions continue without interruption, the Express will receive a constant flow of energy, much like a perpetual motion machine. But, because of our previous encounters, Fuel is being used up much faster than expected. We can probably only pull off two more warp jumps at most. Only two more? Isn't that super risky? Oh, I don't want to become an ice cube floating around in space again. When you put it like that, it doesn't actually sound too bad. But I don't even want to become an adorable ice cube floating around in space again. Which also means that we must prudently consider our next destination. Yes, uh, I've already checked the astral charts. The two nearest worlds to us are the oceanic planet of Lushaka and the agate world Melustanen. As for which one we're headed to, that still requires a vote. 
Or perhaps you might consider a suggestion. Everyone, we meet again. It's you! Why were you just in my room? It's a very cute room, Miss March. Just like you. Memo Keeper, let's put aside how you managed to sneak past everyone and board the Express for now. You mentioned a suggestion. I accidentally overheard how the Express obtains fuel. I just wanted to chat with everyone to see if we could work together. But now, it appears my suggestion could be the very lifeline that saves everyone. Please speak candidly. Depending on what you say, we could very well ask you to disembark. Ah, oh, the Permanence's descendant. What a charming little dragon. Especially with those mired memories of yours. But I digress. If the Astral Express is in urgent need of a special trailblazing expedition to recharge its engine, have you all considered this? Perhaps your destination could be a world that even the renowned Aki Vili never reached. Should you be able to lay down a new stretch of silver rail, the Express may never have to worry about energy ever again. Trailblazing to a world that even Akivili has never been to? Is that possible? Continue, Memo Keeper. This destination of which you speak, what sort of world is it? A world that many across the universe don't even know exists. A world hidden away from outside observation. Its presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. A world fettered by three paths, its destiny hanging in the balance. The Eternal Land, Amphorius. I hope I'm not too late, child. I wasn't expecting it to be you. Don't you know how many sentry posts the family has built? And how hard it is to get you out of here? <laughs> Looks like my time's up. What do you mean? What time? Negotiation, interrogation, or death. My fate lies entirely in your hands, Lady Bona Jade. The dance is done. Why bother with the compassionate pretense and give someone who's about to die the chance to talk? Despite your fall from grace, you still look well. I'm very glad to see that you're so full of verve. <sighs> Do not insult my pride with half-veiled sarcasm. Have you specially come to see me, just to sate your vile vanity? Oh, of course not. I merely came to fulfill your younger sister's wishes. To offer you a generous trade. That is, if you're willing to accept. Robin? To build a true haven where everyone can attain peace. That's the oath between you siblings, isn't it? If I told you there was still a chance to realize this vow, would you be willing to talk to me then? <laughs> I recognize the gravity of this question, which is why you don't have to answer me right now. Go now. You are free, O oh Chosen One, who dare to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. I will not accept your charity. 
As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Rewards are not reaped in a day, and if there's one thing I'm best at, it's waiting. The sweet dream still continues, and the night is still long. You have plenty of time to contemplate your answer. Ah, a word of advice for you before we part ways. A word of warning from someone who's been in your shoes before. Life is too short to miss out on golden opportunities. <laughs>